Hey everybody, Roxabox90 here with the first day of Journey into Nick Spoilers. So we're going to hop right in and we got a whole bunch of new things, including a bunch of new keywords. Let's check it out and see how they are. Ajani's Presence is the first card we have. It's one white for an amazing art. Instant speed card that has Strive, one of the new keywords. It costs X amount, in this case two and a white, more to cast for each target beyond the first. So you play it, you target one thing, and then it costs three more to target another thing, and three more beyond that to target another thing. So it's basically four cost for two heroic triggers, is a way to think about this card. Any number of target creatures, each game one plus one and indestructible. So not only do they get a little pump up for two mana, but they also gain indestructible, and it triggers two heroic. So for a common, that's pretty powerful if you think about it. And of course, Strive, this isn't particularly well costed, but I'm sure they're going to make an aggressively costed mythic or even rare card that could potentially shift the format because I think the ability, while not particularly creative, is definitely a very powerful one for use. Things along the lines of flashback, being able to use something more than once. Cyclops of Eternal Fury, this is kind of what we have with the archetypes before. Creatures you control have haste, that's kind of the ability we expected instead of trample, but you know, you don't get everything you want. This card is very overcosted, I think, even for the haste. But uh, but it is flavorful, and that I say it's in that sense. Dacra Mystic, one blue for a 1-1 one, one Merfolk Wizard. Merfolk are always interesting. One blue tap, each player reveals the top card. You may put the reveal cards into their owner's graveyards. If you don't, each player draws a card. I don't like it. I really don't like balanced effects. The only kind of deck this card I think could work well in is maybe, maybe, a pauper group hug deck for EDH, because you want to have effects that hit each player and that each player would like. In this case, most of the time you're going to just have each player draw a card from it. And one to have each player draw a card is a very nice draw card is a great effect for EDH. I think for such a low cost it could potentially work there for certain builds or for pauper, but I don't think it's going to be very good elsewhere. Adelon of Blossoms. So we had the Adelon Countless Battles last time, which was a really powerful aura card. This card is also fantastic. 2-2 two two green for a 2-2. Two two. With the next keyword, Constellation. What the heck? I guess it's because the Nyx Sky, but very awkward name. It's kind of like that Chroma ability, just in terms of the weirdness of the name. Whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Okay, so Enchantress's presence is an amazing and is a card. Enchantress decks are a thing. The fact that it's an enchantment creature for, for such a weak body, I don't think will let it see play in many of the eternal formats in terms of like legacy and vintage. But I do think this card has a lot of potential for EDH players, EDH commander players. If you guys are have an enchantment or enchantress and kind of deck. This card is a monster card. It's value in and of itself, and it's a consistent draw engine over the game. Great card. Extinguish All Hope. This is not Damnation, therefore it is horrible. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I know Damnation is a card we really want. This card is not so bad. It's, I think, very powerful for limited. It's four and two black. Destroys all non-enchantment creatures, but it's such a narrow card, you see. It's good in a f format that, uh, such as in, in limited, that has a lot of enchantment creatures that you could draw on. But otherwise, it's so narrow for so much mana, I'm not such a fan. Gnarled Scarhide, 1 for a 2-1, one, it can't block, 2 plus 1 and can't block. It's an aggressive cost of black card. Probably, uh, if there's going to be a black aggressive deck, this card could take over for some of the cards that are rotating. And the Bestow, I think, is a little expensive, but for limited, could be could be decent. Very painful looking card. Hall of Triumph, three artifact, a legendary artifact. Very nice, very cool. When it's battlefield, you choose a color. Creatures you control of the chosen color, you one plus one. Okay, it's an anthem effect that shifts per whatever deck you want to put it into. I really like that. I think for EDH Commander, it'll be great. I think for casual decks, it'll be great. It's a one of use because it's legendary. I don't think it's going to make it into constructed, but it's still a very fun card. And it's uh, it's very cool. I row us got a victory, the first god. It's two, a white and a red for a 7-4 indestructible. As long as your devotion to red is, okay, yeah, yeah, it's like the other enchantment gods. Creatures you control can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Wow, that's like, that's madcap skills. And that card is redonkulous in limited. So no matter what, this guy's going to be crazy in limited, period. Prevent all damage to be dealt to attacking creatures you control. So we have two abilities here. Unlike the ones from Born of the Gods, we have two abilities on one of the minor gods, which I don't think is really balanced, 
think that's not really fair at all because this card is obnoxiously good. This is crazy good. Prevent all damage dealt by attacking creatures. Okay, so Boros decks are going to be a thing. This guy is incredibly well costed for mana. Incredibly well costed. Two incredible abilities for aggressive builds. Limited, it is a surefire card. If you pull this, if you pull this in the first pack of draft, you're going to be looking to run Boros just because it's that powerful. It's going to fit the Phoenix mold in terms of being the most powerful limited card that you can really get. Constructive wise, I do think this has a lot of potential. I think it could even work into modern. Honestly, for four mana with this ability, it's an endgame. These are endgame abilities here for aggressive decks. And the fact he's indestructible in himself, it's very likely that with cards like Boris Reckoner, you're going to get him as a 7 4 indestructible, which is a monster beating. He's fantastic, really fantastic, almost unfairly balanced given the other five guards we've had. Hopefully, that means the other guards in the set, such as Crewfix, are going to be awesome. Ravenous Lucrocrocla, it's a dog thing. That has monstrosity, so monstrosity is back in some capacity. I'm not expecting a lot from it because we do have new keywords also, but uh, this card, 4 for 2 4 Vigilance, uh, 2 4s, 4 toughness tend to be decent and limited. We haven't seen all the powers of this of this particular set, but a 2 4 for 4 Vigilance is, eh, it's not that great. I'm not a fan. Seder Hoplite, 1 for a 1 1 Heroic. Whenever you cast a spell target, it gets a 1 1 counter, so it's kind of a generic heroic. Uh, not a bad card, maybe for aggressive decks and limited, but I don't see it seeing a lot of play. Shigild's Starfish. It's a Starfish. 2 for no 3 with Scry. So I like this card a lot. I do think in limited, it gives you a long term pull. You have this card out. You On their turn, you Scry. And then on your turn, you block. Seems decent. White were na Naiads. Naiads. 5 for a 4 4 with Constellation. Target creature who comes can't be blocked this turn. Okay, so it gives unblockable repeatedly. And it's 5 or 4 4, reasonably costed. Definitely a regular for limited. Could definitely fill out the curve. I like it. Then I think that's everything from here. Yep, then we got WPN stuff. We have Heroes Bane, 5, 3, and 2 green. Enters the battlefield with 4. Actually, we have Heroes Bane in the image. What am I doing? Okay, so I'm just going to skip that. We have an image here with some of the booster packs. This is sealed. I guess, or a layout of Sealed. We have an Ajani on the front. That's almost a guarantee that he's a Planeswalker. I'm sorry, if he is on the cover, uh, he's on a pack front, usually they're Mythic or Iconic, and my guess is if this is pushing one more coin and the Ajani is in the set. Amazing. Hero's Bane, it's not that great. It's 5 for a 0, zero 4 one, 1 counters, tap 4, double the 1-1 one, one counters. We have Colonian Hydra, if you guys haven't forgotten that card, and this is not... Cloning Hydra, but it is a regular rare, and I'm sure casual players are going to love it. Uh, I think this is a WPN promo, but yeah, very cool. Almost proof of Ajani being in the set, 99% sure. And then we got the hero artifacts. They look like they're going to be equipments, and they're missing some text. So I think this one shows whenever a creature deals damage, scry one, and then it gives different effects. And Cloak of the Philosopher, Lash of the Tyrant. Uh, I, I think my favorite one at this point is um, is either Spear of the General or Axe of the Warmonger, the red, white and red one. Again, fitting into Boros being awesome because they're incredibly well costed for what they are, meaning they're all the same cost. But this gives 2-0 for a strike, which makes your creature very, very difficult to deal with in limited, or haste, which is great for aggressive. And the other ones I don't think are all that great personally. Maybe Cloak of the Philosopher works with Inspired, but nah, I, I don't know if I'm such a fan of them. Uh, and then we have here, we have the Champion, which is a hero card. Search library for a legendary artifact card that isn't a creature. So I think that could potentially be seeing a lot of focus on uh, on car on equipment cards. Especially uh, Godsend will probably be a mythic card that's ridiculously awesome. Hopefully it'll be something similar-ish to Jate and Swords, like in terms of power level, because we could always use more awesome equipments and... That would be really cool, but we don't really know much else beyond that. And then just mentioning the FNM promo, I believe for June, is Dissolve. And the art is fantastic. I wish it was a little less dark. I don't think as a foil it's going to be particularly stunning, but I'll wait until we see the real foil. Dissolve is a playable card, and it's a really good counterspell card. So I'm happy that they're making a, an alternate art foil. Finally, something playable. If you guys are going to FNM, in June, definitely try to get some of these. I think they're fantastic. So those are all the spoilers and dissolve. Let me know what you think about them down below, and if you enjoy the video, tap the like button. 
If you're new to the channel, check in and subscribe. And as always, guys, stay tuned for more spoilers coming up in the coming weeks. Roxbox90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.